We've all seen or had the question ourselves, how do I start doing 2.5D cuts? Well, normally the answer comes back, hey, go buy this software, which costs hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And not all of us have that. So today we're going to go over a way, in a 100% legally free way, to start making your own 2.5D cuts. Today we'll use Blender, Inkscape, and DMAP to G-Code. And we'll go over how you can easily convert an STL into a depth map, then that depth map into G-Code. So, before we get into the video, remember if you haven't subscribed, press that subscribe and bell button. And if you're interested in a sticker swap, just uh, send me an email to deepelmhammer at yahoo.com and we'll get that going. But let's jump into this and get this project going. All right, so let's go over some of the things you need to do before we get started. First, you're gonna need an STL or an OBJ um, file. Uh, you can grab one from something like Thingverse and this is the one I used by Lee Fab Shop. Uh, downloaded this. Okay, next you're going to need Blender. In this method, we will be using Blender version 2.93.4. Uh, it is different than previous versions, so make sure if you're following along, you're on this version. Inkscape, this isn't necessary. Um, I normally use Illustrator, but again, I wanted to make this 100% free. So you can get Inkscape and use that. And then the last thing we're going to need is this DMAP to G code, and you can get the download there. And I'll have links all down in the description below so you can get these and know where and what we're using. On the DMAP to G code, I do want to point out uh, they have documentation, sample outputs, related links. So you can go through and see, but we'll jump into that a little bit later. First, we're going to start off in Blender for our software. And again, we are using version 2.93.4, so we can just click over here. One of the first things I always do is hit A, gets everything selected, and delete it. All right, now um, let's set our background to being transparent. So we're going to go to Render Properties, go to Film, and then click Transparent. And we'll see what that does a little bit later. Next, we want to re-add a camera here, so shift A, and just come down to camera, like so. And let's go ahead and get that camera set up to the dimensions. So we're going to come here to object properties, and rotation, this is going to be 90, 0, 90, and then we'll pull this down along the x-axis. Next, we're going to want to import our 3D model. So we're going to go to File, Import, and we will be importing an STL. Now we go find our STL, and there we go. We will import that, and there is the big old sucker. Now we're going to hit S to scale this down. And just zooming in and out, I'm just using my track wheel on my mouse. I want to scale this down a little bit more, down to about, oh, 0, 0, 0.9. Okay, now, now to rotate it, you can rotate here, or you can just hit R and the axis you want to rotate around. So I hit R, Z, and we're going to do 180, and then our Y, kind of tilt it. Now, right now we're in a free open world. We can zoom around, do all that in and out. What I want to do is hit zero for point of view, and now we can see our skeleton. Okay, and this right here is our camera that we can select on, but I'm going to go ahead, select our skull again, and let's get it in frame. There we go. Now you can see all these polygons and all these textures right there. What we can do to smooth that out is put go to Modify Properties, add a modifier, and Subdivision Surface. 
and that can take a while but let's let that load and now see we have a much smoother surface for our uh, STL next thing we're going to want to go and do is we're going to want to add a materials property so we'll go ahead and click new here all right now we want to change over to shading up here again make sure you're up here and click zero to change your perspective we'll come down to the nodes area and we want to get rid of that principal BSDF and what we're going to do is we're going to hit shift A and we're going to go search for camera data okay and we'll just go ahead and drop that there we want to hit shift A again and this time we're going to search for math and we'll add that there and then shift A one more time and we're going to do another math oops that's not what I wanted let's go again math add that there all right so for this first one let's keep it at add and the second one we're going to change it to multiply now we want to grab the view z depth and pull that and drag into this first value there and then on the add grab that value and put it into the first first value there then this value into the material output and you can see it just changed to a solid white let's zoom in a little here now this is how you're going to determine its depth you're going to want to play around with these values all right so i know we're going to need to bring this down a little so i think it's about yeah there we go we can start to see our design come in and that looks pretty good but we can play around and get it uh, play around with the dark and the light now in a depth mask you're going to want black to white or white to black and you just need to pick which way you're going to do it our d map to g code can select either way uh, so black can be top or black can be farthest away it doesn't matter uh, what matters is getting a good number of steps between your darkest and your lightest as you can see with this one there wasn't a lot of uh, contrast in it so it came out it worked but it didn't give as much detail as this piece did and just really gave you a lot of good depth once you get comfortable here and you like what you've done you hit F12 and that pops up the render so let's give this a uh, little time to render out real quick and we have a depth mask if you don't like how it turned out you can always just close that down and come back and play with these figures again but if you do like it you can come up to image click there and then save as and we can come in here we'll go put it in our file we want to put it in this is our skeleton and we'll call this we'll call it skeleton save as image all right and now we're done with blender pretty painless and pretty fast now let's jump into Inkscape. All right, a couple things before we get into DMAP to G code. First, we want to get this, what we just created in Blender and open it up in Inkscape. So we'll go to File, Import, Skeleton, and open that up. And let's get it moved in here and then scale down to fit in our area. And this is where you'll set how big or how small you want everything to be. But right now what we're doing is if we were just to cut it like is right now. Um, oh man, it's been a while since I've used Inkscape. All right. If we were to cut it right now as is at this size, this white right here is just going to leave holes that go down deep in there. It's not going to really give you a lot of detail. So to help out there let's go grab our rectangle tool and build that there let's move it out of the way real quick and let's look at this so the black the darker it is the closer to the front it is and the lighter the further back so we want to take change this white space 
so it's not so far back so it uh, cuts but not too deep just leaving a hole looking object so we'll hit D for dropper and let's make it the same depth as this back tooth here and then S for select we'll move this over that and then we can go to object and lower to bottom now we have this depth right here so it's not too far back and you're going to get a little you're going to get better detail that way you could do the same for here but i want this to go as far back as possible that white so if we imported this right now to gmap to g code and we had it set as black as top and white as bottom it's going to take all that alpha channel right now and make it black we want it white because we want it the furthest back so let's go ahead and make a rectangle here and we'll change it to white go back to select and then yeah object and lower to bottom so now we're going to have a white uh, background setting that all the way to that being the furthest back now we can go export PNG. Let's make sure we change it over to page. And then export as, skeleton edit, save. And we'll replace. All right, now let's jump into DMAP to G code. All right, now that we're in DMAP to G code, we just come up here to file, open file image. Let's go find our image. And there we go. So our white is going to be the depth color. And to change that, we just come over here to image properties, change, click white here. Uh, origin, we're going to put it at bottom left for me. And this is going to be your preference. You can put it wherever you want. Uh, our image height from this corner down to this corner is 127, 127 millimeters, and you can change that in Inkscape and play around with all those. I just want to wa quickly walk you through this and kind of give you an idea. Uh, you're going to want to play around with these settings. I have both a 3018 and a long mill, so they're going to be different settings for different materials, and we're not going to jump into all that. Uh, this is just really a walkthrough on the software to give you a starting point there so you can change all your feed rates and plunges and step overs and all that fun stuff. So now that we've talked about all that, you're gonna have two passes, a roughing pass and then a fine detail pass. So the first thing, uh, the first one you're gonna do is the roughing pass when you're cutting. So let's open that and look at what you can choose. So here, very simple and self-explanatory. This is just the diameter of your roughing tool bit. And then you can tell it if it's a ball, a V, or a flat. Most of us are going to be using a flat. Uh, roughing scan pattern, this is going to tell it whether to do rows or columns, or then rows and columns, or columns and rows. Uh, I just left that at rows. Uh, rough cut perimeter rough scan direction uh, i'll leave a link where you can just really dive into all those and see if that's something you want to do um, you got your feed rate your plunge rate your step over there um, your roughing offset and then how deep do you want it to go per pass so make sure you change that one uh, don't want you going in on your 3018 and digging two millimeters in and breaking bits and then to save that you can just hit you hit save G code. We'll just save that to my desktop skeleton edit, edit and it adds the rough there. And then we'll just wait for that to calculate. And once that's done, we'll need to close out before we can mess around with uh, the fine uh, tooling. Mine was I believe 1.25 millimeters. Uh, it is a ball. I did use a ball end. Um, I left it as row. Uh, cut perimeter, alternating, uh, feed rate, I believe on my long mill I put it at 900, uh, plunge rate, I think it kept around 300. Step over on this, I do want to say I did change this to uh, 0 point, uh, or uh, 0 0.4.
millimeters. Uh, Z safe, I did like three, and the max cut depth I did was 10. And again, these are things you're going to want to play around with and see what's going to work for you. Now, once you get all that to save the G code for the fine tool pathing, you just come here, hit save G code. We'll save it to the desktop and then we'll let that go. And then again, before you cut and uh, you can run this in NC viewer, we'll take a look uh, once this is done at what this looks like and how it's going to turn out. So let's let this finish and then we'll look at it in NC Viewer. All right, now that we got all of our G code generated, we can come into NC Viewer. Let's uh, put in our roughing pass first and it's gonna go ahead and plot it out there. And to see, just you can go over all the, you sit here and then you can see all its movements right there. One of the things I did notice is we come down here Let's get down towards the end and we go to digital readout. Let's just make sure that it ends back up at zero zero on the X and Y. Uh, I did have one where it did not. So make sure right here you can see this. You want this to make sure it goes back to zero and zero. Um, if you have a board or anything around it, uh, it'll stop in there. So the simple way to do that is if it doesn't go back to zero, zero, it's just come in X zero point zero, zero, Y zero point zero, zero, and then resave your G code. All right, now that we've looked at the roughing pass, let's come in here and let's look at the fine pass. And we'll Pop that in there, and there you are. Turns out pretty cool. I was really impressed with this over uh, whole setup overall. Um, these small ones took about uh, two hours, maybe at max. Um, this one, however, this big old skull here. Now this took over 36 hours. Um, if you're gonna attempt something like that, put on a couple of pots of coffee. And the cool thing with all this, there's no limitations to your sizing. You can go as big as your cut area or as small. Um, the smaller you get, of course, the less detail you're going to get. If you go to the manual, you can go through all the different settings and what everything is for. Uh, there is another one here um, one thing they don't go over well in the manual there is the scan direction and what all that is but here's a link uh, to what all those mean as well I know we could have delved deeper into all this software and really got into the nitty-gritty of things but to keep things short and just give you an idea that's why we've I've gone as far as I have in this video if you do have any questions and digging in a little bit deeper Leave them down in the comments below. Um, so what is the takeaway in all of this? Well, can you do 2.5D cuts for free? Yes. Um, I don't have a point of comparison as I've never used any of the paid software. This is the only 2.5D cutting I've done. It seems to do pretty well. And I've done everything from something this small up to something this big that's a big boy right there so that's two hours that's 36 hours was it worth it i think it's cool but i'm not sure i would do it again at that size i definitely would work on this smaller scale overall i'm impressed uh yes it's several different programs spread out as opposed to uh one and all but it works and you get to do 2.5D cutting for free. I don't think you can complain on that. So thank you all for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs down. We're cool either way. And again, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and bell. And until next time, keep making stuff.